we can start with uh, face detection and recognition. Why is this important? Uh, we all have this experience, especially when we are entering the building downstairs. We are going to swipe our cards and then especially after hours. And then uh, the system is going to let us in. But you have to swipe your card in one way or another, or you actually have to uh, show it to somebody. But when I was working at NVIDIA, we had this face recognition system that once you're employed, they're going to take a picture of you. you they're going to add you to their data set. And then uh, later on, once you want to enter the building, then there is no need to swipe the card anymore. You just show your face and enter the building. The doors are going to open for you. But how is this possible? Because one day I'm wearing one piece of clothing, the other day I'm changing uh, my haircut. So how is this possible? So this seems to be a very difficult task to write a deterministic code for it, but you can actually approach that problem through a learning problem, through deep learning or machine learning, and try to process images that way. Let's start with deep face. Uh, we know that we as human beings are really good at verifying faces. We know that once we saw a person's face, the next time that we see him or her, we're going to identify them. We're going to see, we're going to say, aha, we saw you last time. We are going to remember faces. The idea is we want our artificial intelligence to do the same thing. And the algorithm is about deep face. Uh, it's going to have multiple stages. Some of these stages have nothing to do with deep learning, especially the alignment process. Actually, for this paper, it's not deep learning, but later on, you can actually replace all of these steps using neural networks. So what are we trying to do? The world around us is 3D. So we have 3D faces. We want to use the 3D geometry of a face to align the 2D version. What do I mean? Uh, first of all, what you're going to do here, you're going to do some face representations from a non-layer deep neural network. So it's going to be a convolutional neural network. And that's where you're going to do the representation and then the classification head on top of it. What I'm talking about here, about alignment, is the second stage. And as long as some data sets are concerned for you to explore, these are really famous ones. They are not big data sets. They are labeled faces in the wild and YouTube faces. This one is videos. But let's go back to our problem. You have an explicit 3D face model, and then you want to rotate the face so that your deep neural network can, can consume it and give you the corresponding representation. What do I mean? The first step is detection. So you're going to use a de face detection algorithm. Not only you are detecting the face, you're detecting these key points of the face. And if you remember, we did key point uh, estimation before when we were doing pose estimation. And we know how to detect objects. We were doing it using deep neural networks. But at that time, this paper was doing it using uh, classical machine learning techniques prior to deep learning. So you first detect the face, you detect the key points, you crop the face, and then you are going to use the 3D geometry of a typical face. So there's only going to be one 3D face model that you're going to use to rotate the face in such a way that it is aligned. So here you're going to use some uh, projections from 3D to 2D. This has nothing to do with deep learning, but what is cool about this, not only you can rotate a face to be forward looking, you can actually rotate the face to wherever ang whatever angle that you like using the 3D face modeling. But that one has nothing to do with deep learning. Later on, we are going to try to solve the same problem using CNNs. So what did we just do? We detected the face. We detected the corresponding key points, which were necessary to help us align the face according to the 3D model. Now you have an image. This H panel, we are, gonna, we are not going to use it. It's just for illustration purposes that you can rotate the face to whatever angles that you like. But this is the angle that we like, forward facing. Once you have this, you're going to take that, push it through your CNN, and then classify it. But then it's not a typical CNN that we are used to because of some minor catches. So what do you do? There is this face. You first detect the face. Then you rotate it and align it. 
you're going to end up with an image that's going to have three kind of channels, red, green, blue. And this process is called detection, localization, and parentalization. And this is using the 3D model. From this point on is deep learning. You're going to do a deep neural network, a bunch of convolutions. The first convolution is going to take three input channels. It's going to output 32 channels. It's going to have a 11 by 11 filter. And then it's going to give you an image that has this resolution, 142 by 142. Then you're going to do max pooling, which is going to keep the number of channels the same. This is a max pooling over windows of three by three. And then you're going to shrink the resolution to 70 by 71 by 71. Another convolution. Now, this is the interesting part. If you remember when we were trying to solve the detection problem using fully convolutional networks, the last few layers, we were trying for them to be position sensitive. It's the same story here. We want them to be position sensitive. Why is that? Because the local statistics around eyebrow is different from local statistics around lips. How do you resolve that issue? So now from this point on, it's going to be local convolutions. Per each output, you're going to have a weight and a bias. And if you remember the global convolution, then you were using the same weights and biases for the next output pixel. Then you were sliding that window. You are sliding, you are still sliding that window, but each one of these pixels are going to have their own weights and biases. So basically every location in your filter map is going to learn a different set of filters. So you are not doing parameter sharing anymore. You are doing parameter sharing up until this point. From this point on, you are not doing it. Then you are going to get a representation that you can use to do your classification. And let's say you have these many identities in your data set. Any questions up until this point? Any questions about local convolutions? The question is, does this network have a fixed crop resolution or does frontalization do that? So this detection and the frontalization, in addition to adjusting the number of pixels, are the pre-processing step. So it doesn't answer your question. So you're going to have a fixed resolution going through your convolutional neural network, which is always 152 by 152 by 3. And you're going to adjust the resolution. You're or, or either going to up-resolve or reduce the resolution before pushing it through your convolutional neural network. So you can think of this as a position-sensitive convolutional neural network. Okay, So far, so good. Once you are here, you end up with some features. You are not done yet. We like those features to have a norm of one because we care about the direction only. We don't care too much about the size of those vectors that we're going to end up with. What is this operation here? You end up with some representation coming out of your convolutional run network. This maximum is not only with respect to this epsilon here, but it's the maximum across your data set. So you're going to look at coordinate i of your feature. Across the data set, you're going to divide it by the maximum. So you're normalizing your features that way, and then you renormalize it again so that it has a norm one. And this epsilon is for you not to divide by zero. Okay. So a minor detail, you do some normalization. Now you're done. You, do, you did your training. Now you have a face uh, recognition system. How are you going to use it in practice? You are going to use it in two ways, either unsupervised or supervised, either closed set or open set. Two faces are going to come in. You are going to compute their corresponding features. And then you're going to look at their dot product. And if the dot product is bigger than a threshold, you're going to say that these two faces are similar. They're the same people. Otherwise, you're going to say that these are different people. So this is open set because you don't need your identities to be inside your training set. This could be a new person showing up, which your algorithm never saw before. The other one is you can supervise it a little bit. How are you going to do it? You have two choices. I think if I explain the second one first, it's going to be easier. You have two images, image from person one or the second image, which could be the same person or another person. And your question is, are these two guys the same or no? You take those two images, push them through your neural network, this architecture. You're going to end up with two feature vectors. You're going to look at the i coordinate of those two feature vectors. And then that's going to be one of your 
features. This is going to tell you the distance between this dimension of feature vector one, feature vector two. And then you're going to introduce some new parameters, alphas, and then you have your data set. These two people are the same. These two people are not the same. Positive and negative examples. Then you're going to train this distance. This could be one of your distances, or it could be a distance of weighted chi-squared distance, which is, again, based on your features, normalized, and then you're learning these weights. Now you have two distances to work with. If two images come in, you can look at these distances and say if the distance is less than a threshold, they're the same. If they're bigger than a threshold, these two images are not the same. So that's how you're going to use this in practice. There is going to be false positive rate because your method is not perfect. It's going to make mistakes. And there are going to be some true positives. And a good quantity to look at are these curves. And they are based on this threshold that you chose. As you play around with the threshold, you're going to land on these curves or on part of these curves. And these are different methods. This is a human crops. So the human is doing the cropping. So that's the ground truth. And this is the deep face single. It's giving you this blue curve as your performance. And then you have this uh, other one, which is an ensemble of deep faces. And this is called ROC curve, receiver operator characteristic. Any questions about deep face? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.